I'm just going to look at three other methods of getting that first fire going, namely the hand drill, the fire plough, and using the sun with a magnifying glass. And let's start with the hand drill, and it's not a method that's traditionally used much in the jungle. It tends to be used more in arid, drier climates, but it can work in the, in the jungle. Um, the problem with the hand drill, uh, as with the bow drill in a way, is finding good materials to construct your, your set with. And that's because the jungle's humid, and you know when wood drops onto the uh, onto the floor, even if it's hanging in branches, it tends to rot very quickly, or insects start to eat it. So it's quite tricky to find stuff that's um, you know is going to work. And also, you know what I found as far as the jungle is concerned is there isn't a great deal of information about what materials to use for the hand drill. So I did a bit of uh, experimenting, and you know mainly focusing on palms because. You know, there are a lot of palms, rattans, which are also part of the palm family. Loads of those are easy to find in the jungle. And this, which is the uh, stem from the um, kabung palm frond, uh, works very well as a, as a hand drill. And if you're lucky, you can find a reasonably dry bit, um, cut your drill out, let it dry a little bit more, and you know, you're pretty much ready to, ready to go. This tree here is the kabung tree, and uh, it's where I've taken the wood from one of the stems of the fronds to make the drill for the hand drill. But the other thing that's interesting about this is the this seems like a hairy material that you find attached to the uh, the trunk of the tree and it's good tinder so it has a sort of double use as far as uh, fire is concerned so um, good tree to know, the cabong tree. The only thing to remember is don't touch the fruit because it's covered with um, a sort of itchy toxin and uh, I once, I was actually using gloves, I once handled this fruit and then managed to get it on my body and it itched like crazy, I tell you. So don't touch the fruit, but everything else is okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll um, we'll look at the hand drill, just how to set it up, etc, etc, etc. And, you know, for me, the, you know, the hand drill, it's... It's not as easy as the bow drill. You know, the bow drill, you've got mechanical advantage, but it's a very satisfying way of lighting a fire. And of course, you don't need a string for your bow as you do in, with the bow drill. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a good one to learn. But because of the high humidity in the jungle, what I find is, you know, when, you, when you're using the hand drill, it's just a little bit harder to get that powder to ignite in the hum humid jungle environment than it is, say, you know, here, you know, where it's... Um, uh, you know, so on my driveway or whatever, where the humidity is a bit lower, but it can work. I mean, there's there's no reason to, not to, to learn it, and it's, as I say, a very satisfying way of lighting a fire. Although the jungle, you know, might not be the easiest environment to do the hand drill in because of the humidity, uh, it does offer one. A very big advantage and that is thanks to bamboo and bamboo allows you to make um, a join between the drill tip and the, the main um, shaft of the spindle and that, that, that really makes life a lot easier because you don't need to create the spindle and the drill bit out of a single piece of uh, material um, and it means that you can use much softer weaker material um, for the drill than if you were using the same material for the drill and the shaft of the spindle. But I think you know one thing that is fair to say about the hand drill is that your chances of finding uh, ideal materials for the hand drill just lying around are pretty slim. And normally I think people would prepare uh, you know hand drill the hand drill set beforehand. And you can see here, you know, it's, that's tiny. And that's that will do about five to ten fires. So here I'm just showing you how the you, know, you can use bamboo as a joint, and the, the main advantage here is you don't need any glue or any string at all. I've just square cut the uh, drill bit, and you just um, pressure fit it into into the bamboo. It's you know it's just dead easy. Here I'm cutting the um, stem of the palm from to to get the main shaft for the spindle and I just want to use the a piece with the skin on the outside because it'll give it a bit more strength because it's actually quite weak stuff. But you could use anything. I mean hardwood is better because it's stronger and doesn't flex as much. But I just wanted to show you you can do it uh, using the uh, kabong palm. And here we have the bamboo joint um, being extremely useful. 
Um, that's the drill bit. So, you know, the technique is, is pretty much the same as the bow drill. We need to uh, burn the drill into the hearth board. The notch is slightly different. It doesn't go in uh, as deep, um, and I tend to dig it out underneath slightly. And then, you know, away you go. And you, you, same, same as the bow drill, you fill the notch with dust, and then you sort of go a bit faster, put a bit more pressure at the end, uh, and ignite the ember. And don't use a green leaf like I'm using here. I just did that to add a bit of colour. Um, but uh, the obviously green leaf has got moisture in them. And that's the hand ring. Getting the right position with the uh, hand drill is quite important, and particularly when you're starting off. And the easiest way to do it is to use a second board like this. So I'm kneeling on this, this board is pressing the half board down. And that allows me to get up above the spindle and really push down you know, with my body weight and get good symmetrical um, spins with the, uh, with the spindle. I can really get, get this going fast and put a lot of pressure onto it. But the truth is, in the jungle, this isn't as practical as that. And a, a better way in the jungle is to actually stand on the half board because you really don't want this to budge when you're spinning. Um, and then you, you're drilling down like this. And it's not as comfortable a position to be in because this arm is a bit constricted, so it's difficult to uh, get the full hand spin that you get with the, with the kneeling position. But in the jungle, that's the one I tend to use. So let's take a look at the fire plow. And this is not uh, a method that I'm particularly keen on. And that's mainly because I just can't find materials that are, are, are really well suited for the fire plow. I'm told if you can find Sotol, for example, it's, you know, it's really very easy and it's very effective. And there's a guy on YouTube saying, you know, he, got, he finds it so easy, you can just do it with one hand. And I believe him, you know, but in the jungle, it's difficult to find materials like that. And you certainly won't find Sotol. So it's very material dependent, but the other thing I really don't like about it is it's incredibly tiring to do it. And in the jungle, you always want to be trying to conserve your energy. You don't want to you know, do anything that's going to really tire you out because you just get exhausted and you're sweating, uh, you know, and it's just something to avoid at all costs. So not a method I'm particularly keen on. Because the wood dust is very exposed with this method, I think it's a, a bit more sensitive to humidity. And you know, here you'll see me fail to get an ember. And I have managed with this wood once before when I was feeling particularly energetic and on a nice dry sunny day. But here I just run out of energy uh, and that's the problem. And I'm sure somebody you know, stronger than I am with a bit more stamina uh, you know, could, can get this to work. But for me, it's not a, a fire lighting technique that uh, I particularly like to use. So finally, uh, I just thought we'd have a quick look at the every schoolboy's favourite way of lighting a fire using a you know, magnifying glass. Um, and a little bit li like with the fire steel, uh, given the choice, I'd rather have a lighter than a magnifying glass. And you know, I find it difficult to imagine a situation where I'd have this and not a lighter. You know, if, if things went wrong, I'd probably end up with neither. Um, however, it's, it is worth mentioning because what you may have uh, in your pack or whatever uh, is a camera or um, some binoculars that you can dismantle and get a lens out of. And then, as long as the sun is shining like it is now, uh, you can start a fire. To use this method, you have to find a gap in the canopy where the sunlight gets through. And the other thing to remember is that you know, strong sunlight, this, uh, is something you tend to get in the morning, uh, in the tropics anyway, because in the afternoon it will cloud over because of uh, trans evaporation. And, you know, you're going to want your fire in the evening, not, you know, in the, in the middle of the day. So it's very useful if you know how to carry fire, because then you can take that fire with you and use it in the evening to start the fire when you want it. And that's what we'll cover in the next video.